Bless the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Come let us worship the Lord all together here today. Let us worship the Lord in His presence as we pray. He'll be there to receive you when His presence you enjoy. Be at peace with the Lord today. I am at peace with my Maker since He brought me here today.
thank you. You may be seated in his presence. Hallelujah. We want to welcome all of our guests, our family and friends. And we're, we're here with uh, Cornerstone, Samoan, Church of God, Assembly of God. And we are here also with uh, Teshuva Israel. And we're here with Victory Tabernacle family. Amen. But we're all one family. We're all one family of God. We're one kingdom. Amen. It's God's kingdom. And we're here to lift him up, to glorify his name. Well, what a special occasion to have the Taurus scroll. You don't know what a treat this is. This is a very rare thing to have two Torah scrolls, a kosher Torah scroll in our midst today. God's word in its original form, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The menorahs, they represent uh, the seven spirits of God from the altar of God. Read about it in Revelation. That's New Testament, by the way. Hallelujah. We honor you, Pastor Timothy. Honor you, Mother Timothy. Welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're here to honor the Lord. To lift him up. Amen. To lift him up. He's so worthy of all praise. Oh, he's a good guy. Oh, I know we could be have a program and we're going to get moving in a moment, but we're just going to, I want to linger in his presence right now and just think about his goodness to us. Amen. Oh, he's a good God. He loves us so much. He's a good shepherd. There is none other like him. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Yeah, I say unto thee, my people, I am pleased with the praises and the honor that you have given me. And I shall bless thee, and I shall lift thee up, and I shall make thee plentiful. Ooh. Hallelujah. Receive the, the word of the Lord. He's pleased with our blessings. Pleased with our honoring him. He's pleased with our reverencing him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm going to ask Reverend Deb to come and to share a few of the announcements that we have here. And if we have a representative from uh, Cornerstone that can announce uh, there's any, anything you have going on that you'd like to share as well afterwards. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Okay, tomorrow, tomorrow night at 7 is uh, Del Paso Heights Aglow. And we have Shauna Smith coming in to speak. She'll be a great speaker. We're looking forward to having her here. Um, that's at 7. Everybody's welcome. And Tuesday, we have, at 6 o'clock, we have prayer. Everybody's welcome to that. You know, I've challenged you. Come out once a month. Amen. That's all I'm asking. Come out once a month. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I can even do that. Amen. <laughs> And then at 7 o'clock, we have the Bible study. Uh, we are studying Graham Cook's book, The Game Changers, which is a phenomenal book. We're enjoying that class. Wednesday, the Bible study has been changed to 1.30, and we are studying uh, the feast in the book by divine appointment, written by Noreen Jacks. Dr. Noreen Jacks, I drew a blank. I'm so sorry. And she's written a great book on the feast, so we are studying that. And that's 1.30 on Wednesdays. It, too, is open to everyone. All right, Saturdays, we have we are hosting Shuva Israel as Stuart Paul Sch Schlenvoet. Well, I'm trying hard here. <laughs> Leads us in a Parsha study beginning at 2 o'clock. That, too, is open up to everyone. Save the date, December 16th, for our annual Hanukkah and holiday party. Let Pastor Fauna know if you're going to be having any children come so she can prepare and make sure we're, we're covered with the children. Amen? Amen. All right. And everybody, um, have a blessed week. Amen. Do we have any from the corner? Let's share. Pastor Tao, do you want to share any announcements about Cornerstone? Okay. He'll do that later. That's fine. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is so good, amen. Yeah. He is so good, amen. Yeah. Amen. 
You know, just, uh, yes, we're, my, one of my brothers said, well, I don't understand celebrating Hanukkah, I celebrate Christmas. And I said, I'm glad you celebrate the birth of Christ, but he was actually born in the fall. But uh, the dedication of the temple was a real holiday that Jesus himself celebrated in Israel. And we figure if, if it's good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for us. Amen? And uh, it was uh, that it was the celebration of the rededication of the temple where they, they the, the Jewish people had reclaimed it from their conquerors, uh, the very evil Epiphanes, Antioch Epiphanes. And he had desecrated the temple. And they went in and they just a band full of priests and their followers overtook the strongest army in the world at the time to take the temple of God back. Now that in itself was a huge miracle. But then something else happened. They found there was only one cruise of oil left to, to burn the menorahs in the temple as the, the word of God ordained for them to do. And it took them eight days to prepare, or seven days to prepare the other, uh, the next cruise of oil. And the one cruise that was only supposed to last one day, it lasted eight days. And you know, that is also symbolic because we know that Jesus is the light of the world, amen? We know that he is, and we lift him up. And uh, we also know that eight is the number of new beginnings. And what did Jesus say? He said he makes all things new again, amen? Old things have passed away and all things are made new again. We have new life in Christ were adopted into God's family through him. So there's all kinds of reasons why we Christians should celebrate Hanukkah. And uh, we also celebrate the birth of our Christ. I prefer to do it in Sukkot at Feast of Tabernacles because that's when he actually came. But uh, praise God, we use, we use Christmas as an outreach to tell people about Jesus. Amen? But welcome, welcome. We would love to have you come and, and be part of our holiday parties. We're going to celebrate Hanukkah. And we're going to celebrate uh, the birth of Yeshua. And we're going to have a good time. Your little kids, we want to know, because we have presents and candy and stuff for them. We yelled at them for them to play dreidels. And that's a whole other story. Amen? Amen? Well, we're going to worship the Lord some more today. So we're going to ask our worship leader to come and to lead us in worship today. They have a beautiful worship set. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
this morning, you guys who brought us here to worship. Send 
elders and our prayer leaders for both churches to come. If you have a need, a prayer request you would like to say to the Father, come now and have our elders agree with you according to the word of God, which says that if any among you are sick, let him call from the elders of the church. Let them anoint you with oil. If you committed any sins, they will be forgiven. And you shall be healed. So if you have a physical healing, an emotional healing, a financial need, an unsaved loved one, what a care of this world, because Jesus said, the pastor cares upon me, because I care for you. Jesus said, my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The word also teaches us that you have not because you ask not. So you have a need, a concern. We've already glorified the Lord and will continue glorifying Him this morning. But you're His children. And He has good gifts for His children. And He says, come to Abba and ask of me what you will. So if you have a prayer need, come and our prayer team will pray with you this morning. Cornerstone, if you want to release your prayer team to come as well, that would be good. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
Give him glory and honor and praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. 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 Wor
Let's just come into agreement. Hallelujah. Father, will we just come into agreement right now that everything in Ray's body will be brought into perfect order. You'll give him the shalom of God, that it will be all over him. You'll give him great wisdom whether to go or not to go. We give it all into your hands. And we thank you in the name of Jesus right now. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This scripture and try to read it every day. Thank you, Pastor Cleo, for bringing that to our spirits. Okay, you know, I came across something that I, I couldn't have said better myself. Two words are often spoken in the same breath, tithes and offering. Amen. But what's the difference between them? Tithe literally means a tenth or ten percent. A tithe is the first fruit of your income. Did you hear what I said? Amen. Not the not the fifty. Not not the last, not in between, but the first fruits. An offering is anything you give in addition to your tithes. The Bible says, Deuteronomy 14.23, the purpose of tithing is to teach us always to put God first in our lives. What's it for? Teach us. God first in our lives. That's right. Let's say that. Teach us to put God first in our lives. Tithing is a reminder that God is the supplier of everything we have. It is also God's personal invitation to experience an outpouring of his blessing in each of our lives. In Malachi 3.10, God especially says, Go ahead, I dare you. See if you can outgive me. And in 2 Corinthians 8.7, we're encouraged to excel in the grace of giving because God influences the world through his people. He influences the world through all of us. As we are faithful he gives to you as he can give through you he gives to you so he can give through you did you hear that he gives to you so he can give through you as we're faithful the world is changed for the glory of god the life jesus offers is preached our pastor preaches it every Sunday, doesn't he? People are fed. Brokenness is healed. Churches are built. And each of us, in turn, are blessed by God so that we can give again. So is God wise? Do we trust him? If God is wise, then we are wise to follow what he says about financial stewardship. If we trust him, then we must trust, if we trust him, then we must trust him for with all aspects of our lives, including our finances. So go ahead, accept God's invitation to put him to the test. Faith, excuse me, tithe faithfully and watch what he does and through your life. Isn't that good? Are those just words that I'm speaking? No. It's something that I live. It's something that most of you live. And you know what? All of us need to live the tithe and offering. Let's pray this morning. Father, I ask that you would just put these words in our hearts, in our minds. Help us to put you first in our lives in our finances because we know that that would glorify you pleasing to you we want to please you we want to love you with everything within us and father as we live as you live in us with everything we ask that you would help us to appreciate and to live what you have for us lord we're so thankful 
Help us just to remember your word and what you are, how wise you are. We want to be wise like you. In Jesus' name, we thank you. And your almighty God, in Jesus' name, amen.
We serve an awesome God, don't we? He is faithful all the time. Amen. He is good to us. Well, we have a real treat this morning. We have Ardalan here with us. And Ardalan is going to come and share a little bit about the School of Music. In fact, I have somebody that wants their daughter to play violin. They want to sign her up. She's 12 years old. She lives in Carmichael. And they're going to come visit your school. They used to live on Ingle. So we're going to send them over that way. Did you bring us flyers today? We'll give them out to our friends and our other churches in the area. But Ardalan, come and share with us what, what uh, God has given you. This is an amazing, talented young man. And uh, he's played before thousands, and uh, he will the rest of his life, I'm sure. But yet yeah, he comes here. Would you yes. like to play something? Oh, please. You have three pieces, don't you? Yes. Yes, amen. So Ardalan is going to come. He's going to share what God has given him. Uh, I was gonna, Brother Ray was gonna share today, but <clears throat> I was told he's not singing. So, so he's gonna sing for us. Again. While Ardalan gets ready, last week was Veterans Day. I was out of town, but I wanted to know any of those that are from military families or veterans yourselves. Will you stand so we can recognize you today and tell you thank you? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, look around. We appreciate the armed services. You know, freedom isn't free. We appreciate your sacrifice and your family's sacrifice. And thank you for serving our nation and keeping us safe. Amen. So give the, give the Lord a great big round of applause for these faithful servants that have served our nation. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Ray was going to sing a song about, uh, about the soldier. And he'll sing it again for us another time. Ardalan, come on. Come on right up here where we can see and hear you real well. Amen. Amen. Hi, uh, my name is Ardalan Bracherlu, and I'm really delighted to be here today. I'm the founder of Harmony Music Institute in Carmichael, um, one of the first nonprofit institutions in Sacramento that serves the low income families and teaches music to the people who actually cannot afford music. And I'm a violinist and conductor, and uh, I study masters in music at Sacramento State University, uh, concentrating in conducting. I'm also an orchestral conductor. I work for the Sacramento Youth Symphony, which is another nonprofit institution that serves low income families, and we have five different orchestras from different levels of musicians. And uh, I'm happy that I get to do that. Also, I'm uh, I'm really delighted to be here because uh, we're we're really close friends with um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Tim uh, Tim, and uh, I will be playing some music for you guys today. Hope you guys enjoy. Thank you. Sebastian Bach was written in 17th century. He was a musical genius that wrote almost 1,000 pieces for unaccompanied violin around that time. Uh, this particular piece that I will be playing has a very interesting story behind it. This piece was written right after Bach returns from a musical tour in Vienna and comes back home and sees that his daughter and his wife is dead on the ground after two months of absence from the home. So this reads, he writes this massive, huge emotional piece just for that reason. So um, this is about seven minute piece, hope you guys enjoy. Amen.
You almost got to hear him sing too. He says, can we sing it together? Next time we'll put the words up and we can all sing it together. Amen. Hallelujah. So, I don't know if you caught that, but the Harmony School of Music and uh, the Sentinel Youth Symphony, all the projects he's involved in, are uh, provide music instruction to all people, whether they can afford it or not. So if you have some young people interested in music, it's a into universal language. It's a safe place to send them to learn and from one of the best. He came all the way from Iran to be here. All the way from Iran. And one of the great families of Iran. Amen. Amen. And so we're so honored to have our man with us. We're so honored to have you with us. And uh, we have information about the schools, so take it to your children, your grandchildren, and let them know. It's a great opportunity. You don't want to miss it. Amen? Amen. 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 I pray that uh, everything he puts his hand to is blessed. He's, hel he's uh, helping us. He's the uh, overseeing all the artistic direction for the Messiah Project. So, uh, God willing, we'll get <coughs> some headway on that soon. Amen. <coughs> Praise God. Is God good? Yeah, Brother Cleo wants to testify, so let me say a word for the Lord. Last, uh, I guess it was last Tuesday, I was sitting at the house and my daughter came by to visit with me. And uh, I know she had something on her mind. I didn't know what, but I knew she had something on her mind. And she said, just go sit down in the front room, Dad. So I said, okay. We went in there and sat down. And she said, our church Sunday... She said, when you walked in the front door, the power of God would almost knock you over. Amen. She said, we had people healed of all different diseases. We had people slain in the power, which you hardly ever see anymore, Pastor. She said, well, and she said, you know, Dad, it reminded me of back 45 years ago. I remember I was a little girl, but I remember at East Side Tabernacle when you took us there and they had the same kind of service. And I told her, well, God never changes. Amen. 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 And you know, people, we got a lot of people that love God just like we do. Amen. And these other, a lot of churches, just like the one that came to fellowship with us today. Isn't that wonderful to have people that love God to come in and fellowship with you? I thought it was just absolutely great. But you know, I'm looking for a time in my life when I hear that horn blow, Pastor. All right. And God comes back and He takes me home. And I'm going to trip the pastor because I want to get down to God's feet first. And I want to, I want to kneel down and I want to lay my crown at His feet and say, Lord, this is all I got. But, you know, I, I just thought I'd share this with you because it touched my heart when she was telling me this and I see little tears in her eyes and I hope they're having a good service today as well. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. 
God's good all the time. God never changes. The same yesterday, today, and forevermore. We change. The culture changes. But God never changes. And it remains the same. Faithful from everlasting to everlasting, abounding in love, grace, and mercy. Able to save all of the lost. Amen. Reconcile us to God and call us his children. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Elder Watts? Yes, sir. I put you on the spot. You're going to sing something for us today before we move on? Amen. Come on. Hush. Hush. Somebody is calling the name. Hush. Hush, hush, somebody's calling my name. Hush, hush, somebody's calling my name. Hush, hush, somebody's calling my name. Oh, my Lord, oh, my Lord, what shall I do? Jesus, somebody's calling my name. Sound like Jesus, somebody's calling my name. Sound like Jesus, somebody's calling my name. Oh my Lord, oh my Lord, what shall I do? Hush, hush, somebody's calling my name. Hush, hush, somebody's calling my name. Hush, hush, somebody's calling my name. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord, what shall I do? What you gonna do? Oh, when death come a creeping in your room. Oh, what you gonna do? When death come a creeping in your room. What you gonna do? Oh, when death come creeping in your room, oh my Lord, oh my Lord, what shall I do? Hush, hush, Amen. somebody's calling my name. Hush, sure. hush, somebody's calling my name. Somebody's calling my name. Oh, my Lord, oh, my Lord, what shall I do? Run, said, oh, run, find you a hiding place. Oh, run, said, oh, run, find you a hiding place. Santa run, find you a hiding place, oh my Lord, oh my Lord, what shall I do, hush, hush, somebody's calling my name, hush, hush. Somebody's calling my name. Hush, hush. Somebody's calling my name. Oh, my Lord, oh, my Lord, what shall I do? God, ah, see it. Leave my people alone. 
a service in Laban's household resulted in the birth of the nation of Israel. Yes, amen. So Jacob went into Rachel also, and indeed, he loved Rachel more than Leah, and he served with Laban for another seven years. Genesis 29, 30. There are few ideal families in the Bible. Jacob certainly wasn't. As if it was not bad enough to have two wives, <laughs> they were sisters. Being married to the same man made them bitter rivals. This made for such a dysfunctional combination that the Torah later legislates against marrying sisters in Leviticus 18.18. 18. Right, right. yeah. The sisters added to the dysfunction by offering Jacob their maidservants, Bilhah and Zilpah, <laughs> as additional baby makers in their, in their <laughs> contest to bear sons. And you thought keeping the peace with one spouse was difficult to try having four. Jacob's family was far from the ideal. Yet his children were the fulfillment of the Abrahamic promise. His children were quite literally the children of Israel. This teaches us that God is able to work and chooses to work his purposes in less than ideal conditions. Have you ever felt like your family is an embarrassment? <laughs> if only we looked like the smiling perfect family on the cover of the homeschool magazine. A fresh a frustrated mother sighs. Today, broken families and second marriages are common. Obviously, this is not the ideal, but God can work with even the worst of circumstances. He is the God who brings order out of chaos and shines light into darkness. Jacob could have become bitter and complained to God. I wanted one wife, and now I am stuck with four. <laughs> How could you do this to me? But this less than ideal family situation he landed in was God's way of multiplying Jacob's seed and keeping the promises made to Abraham. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Kind of get a kick out of those commentaries sometimes. You know? <laughs> Read it for yourself. Amen. Read the Torah portion. It's good. You know, God gave us the instructions in His Word, and we read through it once a year in various sections. It's good. It's good to read God's Word. Amen. But we have a special treat. Is Taliban yet? Not yet. Oh my goodness. Okay. We're going to have a Samoa worship dance in a minute. That I'm stalling right now. Brother Paul, come up here and share something about Shabbat. Amen. Amen. Welcome, Brother Paul, from Teshuva, Israel. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Tim. Um, I, uh, Book of Proverbs says, that those who do not follow Torah, even their prayers are an abomination to God. And uh, Shabbat is the sign by which we shall know His people. Um, the uh, my walk has been a little off parts of my life, and. Uh, but um, God has blessed me, and he has blessed me with the ability to have a, a service a study here in this building, this structure, on Saturday starting at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We study the parashas, but we also study much more than the parasha. And uh, I wanted to mention to you also these scrolls that I have. These are God's blessing to me. And... Uh, this young gentleman plays a very beautiful violin. And a, and, a, and a fellow in a documentary commented about a Stradivarius violin. How it felt like to own a Stradivarius violin. 
And this 80-some-year-old musician commented, he says, I don't own that violin. He says, I only, that violin is three times as old as I am. He says, I've only paid for the privilege of being the steward. And if I am a good steward, when I'm gone, somebody else. I'm getting a little choked up. All right, all right. Um, I love the violin like no other instrument. And he says, if I'm a good steward, someone else will be able to play this violin for more generations. Now, I was broke, and uh, I was in search of some Torah scrolls for the purposes of assisting in a congregational setting. And the Lord blessed me out of the blue as I'm going through Colorado with a phone call to a cell phone that hadn't worked for hours with a call from a client who wanted my services when all calls for services should have been long gone. And I was able to capture a very sizable sum of money but just prior to that phone call, the Lord spoke with me and he says, I have a blessing for you. And I get this call. Now I was in transit to Colorado to assist a gentleman who taught me to blow the shofar and have provided me with my horns to take a 14 passenger bus as a contribution to a, a charity. And uh, so with that, when we parted, that phone call came at that moment, and after that moment, we didn't have cell phone service for another hour. It just, what a blessing, just this little novel niche in these mountains. And uh, so when I got home, I began pursuing the scrolls that I had been promised, and the Lord spoke to me and said, here it is. Now... I bought these on eBay. But I'm going to tell you, when you go on eBay looking for Torah scrolls, it's very specific. They're not going to sell them to a goe. They're not going to sell them outside of the synagogue. And in order, after you make arrangements to purchase this, they want your qualifications to whether or not you are worthy of having these scrolls. So I pursued one, and I said, okay, I bid on it, and I got it, and I said, well, you know, see what happens. And... Uh, uh, there was, in that particular case, there was no admonition, no requirement to be connected to a, a Jewish synagogue. And as I'm looking through the eBay, the same day, I see another one of the Lord says, that was yours. Who am I to argue? So I got it. Now, this one came from Southern California. This is in a, is in an Ashkenazi format. This one is right after, as I understand, the Second World War. And it's a kosher scroll, it's kashrus. Um, if you've never personally viewed a scroll, take this as your opportunity. These scroll, scrolls, letter for letter, character for character, are identical. And this second one, is from the 1850s. It is what is known as the Maghreb style. It's from the South African regions of the Maghreb style. This one is written on leather, and this one is written on papyrus. Um, they're far older than, this one's older than I am. This one, not so old. But, <laughs> you know, I'm just a steward. That's all. Just a steward. Amen. Now, we, you know, feel free, feel comfortable to, to look and observe. We have a, a pointer here. It looks like a hand with a finger. That's called a yod. And the yod is so that you can follow your place and look at the characters, character by character, without ever touching the scroll with your finger. And this is a very important thing. These, uh, uh, and with this one here, you can see a little difference in the color.
coloration here? Well, prior to my acquiring these scrolls, this one ha had been handled occasionally by fingers and hands. And that's literally a hand grip. And the, the <coughs> ink is coming through on the back side. Well, not coming through, <coughs> but it's becoming a little bit translucent, so you can see the ink from the, on the other side. And you're more than welcome to view them. And uh, the, uh, uh, but anyone who is, uh, uh, wishes to join us on Saturdays here, two o'clock. Uh, you're more than welcome to. We get into in depth of the parasha and connect with it other scriptures. It's uh, uh, I'm obviously enjoying it, and uh, uh, Nam is a regular participant with us. He's over here in the back. He's a great fellow. He's a very humble fellow, very quiet, and. Uh, he, he totally amazes me sometimes. I, I've got a history of science studies at the you know, degree, and, and I get kind of involved sometimes. He's the guy that knows exactly what I'm talking about, and then surprises me with some of his own. He's kind of a kindred spirit, wonderful guy. And you're, uh, you're all welcome, and you're more, more than most certainly welcome to view these scrolls at your, at your leisure today. God bless and blue the Praise the Lord, amen. We're right on track. We're not even late, guys. We're going to get out of church earlier than usual today, amen. Then we're going to have some lunch together and have a good time. Praise the Lord. Uh, we're going to have the Samoan worship dance for the group, and they have prepared a special dance for us today. And so welcome them. Are you going to be on the floor or on the platform? On the floor. Okay, we're going to come down and watch it. So we're going to sit sitting behind them.
Hallelujah. They were, they were saying, oh, be the top of the finish at 1.30. Don't worry about it. The only thing that they say, I want, be there before 1 o'clock. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes in our prayer meeting, we start at 5, 6, I mean, uh, in uh, Saturday, 8. They were here at 8.30. Yeah. Right. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let the Spirit work in us. Yeah. 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 We say you love the Lord, but for us, no, love the Lord, love the servants. Love means Amen. love the spirits. Hallelujah. Amen. I wanted to let you know suffering yeah. is not, not, I mean, for a last uh, point I want to say, our hope is not made in vain. Amen. Because trouble don't last always. In verse 13 that uh, we, we, we read, our present suffering are not worth compared with the glory that will be revealed in us. Amen. I want to let you know suffering is not last forever. Oh. I don't know about my brother Jay. I mean, yeah. Myself too. I feel pain. There's a pain that I won't let you know only God by myself. But thanks to this last point that our suffering is not last forever. Okay. Hallelujah. Amen. In the uh, in 1 Peter 4, verse 13, but we rejoice in as much as he are partakers of Christ's suffering that when his glory shall be revealed, he may be glad also with exceeding joy. Amen. What time is we done this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, suffering when Christ comes to take his journey? Yeah. Hallelujah. The word to let steadfast. Let confirm, let stand firm, stand Amen. firm. Lord. Hallelujah in Christ. Amen. And Peter said, There's a time that Christ comes. Amen. There's no more pain. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of our, uh, I heard a lot of uh, experience that we have in now. They have medicine. They say, Oh, this medicine we're going to bear from fruits, from leaves. What God do. And you know what? It's very expensive. Yes. Right. Hallelujah. But just in the name of Jesus, of believe and trust them. Amen. That will help your pain. Amen. And wait till there is a minute. There's a time come over. Jesus come to take those pain away. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. God put a limit of those yes. things in our life. When the glory of God revealed, yes. then all pain is gone. Amen. Our hope is not vain. Just remind. <coughs> Trouble makes us cling to our hope. God consoles us in our suffering. Trouble don't last always. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you. And thanks God that for using myself. Yeah. And I thank the word of God. He speak to me first. Yeah. Hallelujah. Speak to me first. I have a hope. My hope that I need be a, too many too big many people in our in our, in our church. Right. But God said, I will put you those family in five years. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a hope that you want it. You need it. Hallelujah. Thank and you. I don't know what God speak to yourself. Yes, amen. amen. God gives you uh, things that three months, two weeks, a year. Yeah. All right. Hallelujah. Amen. But believe in God. God. There's time. There's me. I, I, yes. I share with one of the ladies. I pick it up from a hospital. And I drop it off at the home in Sunrise. And I heard what she say. Hey, I got to face this trouble, this problem. Hurt. I got to feel hurt. And I told her that there's a time that Jesus come. Yeah. And, this, and the, you know what the lady said? She was taking drugs. She was taking the life, I mean, uh, things of this life. But right now, he believed in God. And I told her that there's times near that Jesus come and take away all those burdens. Take away all those God. things. Praise, God. Praise the Lord. In your name, Jesus, I pray. May I preach. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Before I, uh, I 
the lead the pulpit, I would like to ask my our people, or some more people that next week, we have our, our Thanksgiving. But uh, on Sunday, we have no uh, fruits to bring it here because I know that Timothy doesn't like it. And on Sunday, we have to come on Sunday, whatever you can, to celebrate our Thanksgiving. We have come prepare on Sunday for our Thanksgiving. Yeah. And I thanks um, Pastor Timothy and also our pastors and our, our Christian family of Dr. Tabernacle. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Yeah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, thank you. same theme, I just want to read one verse to you. It's in 1 John. <coughs> and we usually close our service by singing this verse. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knew, knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now we are the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear that we shall be but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Amen? Amen. But it's our desire to be like him now. It's our desire to be worthy of the high calling of sons of God, as daughters of God. You should have walk and make him proud of you. Amen? Amen. Amen. I just want you to resonate. Let that resonate in your spirit this week. Think about that. But you are son or a daughter of God. How are you going to let that be manifest as Pastor Tao shared? Love towards one another. Standing strong in the promises of God. Reaching out to those that are less fortunate in different ways. The secret things that nobody knows about. You get no credit except for from God alone. Amen. How are you going to show that you are a son or daughter of God? Not because you have to, but because you want to. Not because you have to, but because you want to. You want to please Him. Amen. What a powerful word Pastor Tao brought this morning. Thank you, Pastor Timothy. We love him. Hallelujah. Let's stand together as we close out our service. Is Maurice still here? There she is. Why don't you sing this out and like his love never fails. Let's just close with that. <laughs> one thing. We're going to close off with one thing that we started off. Then we're going to be dismissed to uh, have our lunch together. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Aren't you glad, grateful that we are sons and daughters of the Most High God? Aren't you glad that even when we stumble, and that we fall, that he comes and he finds us right where we're at? And he comes after us. He's the good shepherd. He's the 99. He comes after the one. We're his sons. We're his daughters. Stronger than the power of the rain.
the depth of your love for us. Yet we experience it every day. You call us, you invite us to come into your presence and to commune with you. Father, I pray that this day, each one of us, We'll have a greater desire to spend time in your presence. We will have a greater desire to hear what you have to say to us. We will have a greater desire to show your love to the world around us who need to know you. And know, oh Lord, that you will establish our paths you'll open the doors that we should go through and you'll shut the ones not meant for us. Your word will lead us. It's a light into our feet and a lamp into our path. And your Holy Spirit will strengthen us. Until that day when we see the glorious return when you come to receive us unto yourself, Lord. We ask that you keep us. Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for the food that's been provided. We say, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Blessed are you, O oh God, King of the universe, our sovereign, our God, who brings forth the bread from the earth. And we thank you now in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah and Supreme King. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. The whole what manner of love the Father has given unto us. The whole what manner of love the Father has given unto us. That we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. We are be with God and enjoy the food of the fellowship. Amen. Grab a chair and put it on the table as you go.